fstoppers.com has teamed up with Alaya Licardi to create Photographing the World 3, the ultimate photography tutorial on all things landscape and cityscape photography. You're watching the behind the scenes series on the creation of this full tutorial. And if you'd like to learn more about the full product, head over to fstoppers.com slash store. In last week's episode, we hiked down into a giant canyon to film the next lesson for photographing the world. While flying the drone, I crashed it on the opposite side of the canyon that we would be filming in. While I went in search of the drone, Patrick and Aliyah continued up the other side of the canyon to find a location to shoot. He said he wasn't looking behind him and I guess was doing a reveal shot and ran into the mountain. I don't know how you could do that. That seems like the absolute worst call of judgment. <laughs> I could understand a yeah. tree or a zip line or something, but into the mountain. Yeah, and anybody who's watching this behind the scenes, bear in mind that most of the drones now have <laughs> Look at him trying sensors to in the back that keep you from doing that. He's so... like climbing the face of this mountain. <laughs> yeah, hold on guys, I'm gonna switch to 4K so we can see what happens here so we can zoom in. Okay, I have just climbed this entire way up here i was getting so scared i was like the drone's dying yeah it's pointing where it is but like it's not making any sense and then all of a sudden i see it i don't know how i'm gonna get over there but i am going to get this drone back oh my gosh i am so relieved lee has recovered the drone he is somewhere over there I heard a yeehaw, so I think that's a good thing. Meanwhile, I found the cave. I'm gonna go back here. And look at that, that is pretty awesome. So I'm gonna set up a shot here. We're gonna be doing the lesson. If they make it back up here in time, this is where we're gonna be shooting. Okay, I got it. You can see I broke one of the propellers. I think I, uh, I just ran into this rock wall. So this will be an excellent test of uh, the sturdiness of this drone because I hit this thing going full blast. Totally, totally my fault. And I thought uh, I was much better at flying drones than this. So now I somehow have to climb back down and this is really dangerous. Like it was dangerous climbing up, but it was daytime. The sun is almost completely down at this point and I have to climb back down. Patrick is yelling at me across the mountain. Let me see if I can show you him. What I didn't know was that Patrick was trying to tell me that he could see somebody messing with my camera bag that I had left down at the bottom of the canyon. Patrick then started to run down the mountain to warn me but he left his phone behind in the cave shooting a time-lapse. Lee's trying to tell Patrick something. Patrick's doing a time-lapse on his phone. I don't know what to do. I could answer it, but then I'll mess up the time-lapse. Some asshole stole the D500 right off the tripod. Lee was climbing up to get the drone and somebody actually stole the D500. So we're trying to find this guy. I had no idea where he was. While Lee was out here finding the drone, down here is the camera. He just left the camera there because there's no one else on the track. And uh, I saw a guy go up to it and I thought he just looked at it, but Lee says he stole it. He went down there and the camera's gone. The thing is, I can see everybody. I can see a couple here. There's Lee. I'm pretty sure the guy went this way, which Lee should have found, but it's just there's not many people out here and I can see every direction and every way they went. So. It's just messed up. We just had a camera stolen in front of our eyes. Like I saw it, but the guy was so small that I couldn't tell if he took the camera or if he was just looking at the camera. Patrick was able to see which way the camera thief started to run. So I started to chase him. Patrick came down to guard the rest of my gear. Oh my gosh. He's my friend uh. and I was up there and I saw the guy do it, oh, really? but he disappeared. You could see he didn't even know how to take off the plate. So he just unscrewed the plate here and left us the grip. And then he took off that way and I saw him go. But uh, Lee's on the hunt trying to find him. 
The trail ended up splitting into two different directions and I chose the wrong one. By the time I got back around to the beginning of the trail, I looked up and actually saw the camera thieves walking up towards the top of the mountain. I think those are the people who stole my camera. So I continued to chase them. So I just ran all the way back up the mountain and then back into the city. I can't even barely breathe. Somehow they got away. I am so pissed off. Oh my gosh, I'm tired. I've run up and down this mountain like three times now. I have the tripod, I have the other cameras. I'm gonna try to film something with Elia so that this potentially $5,000 screw up can be turned into something. Yeah, leave, leave it there. He will come back for it. Now I got people trying to take the jacket that I left Lee. So I'm currently walking back down the mountain and I can see Eli and Patrick filming in this cave. You can see the light they have on in there. And this is getting more and more dangerous because it is super dark already. But soon, it's going to be pitch black dark right here. Luckily, I'll be climbing back up by then, hopefully. And it's a little safer to climb up a mountain when it's dark rather than down, but... Oh my gosh, what a shitty... A shitty day. So I just made it back down to the bridge. So I'm now at the bottom of the canyon. My jacket is just in the middle of this path. So I don't know if it fell or he didn't see it, but I'm lucky somebody didn't just steal my brand new jacket. <laughs> Here's the other crazy thing. I hid the drone when I was running after the thieves and I just stuck it behind a rock and I told Patrick where it was and I just assumed that he got it. But I was like, you know what? I should check and make sure that he got the drone. <laughs> Here it is, hidden behind this rock. Oh my gosh, I am so glad I looked. As I'm walking up, I keep having these funny thoughts. The tripod that the guy left behind was worth over a thousand bucks. I don't remember if this is the Benro or the Enduro. I don't remember which one it is, but it's one of these insanely priced carbon fiber tripods that we borrowed from B&H just to review on this trip. Anyone who's not a photographer would never in a million years dream that the tripod could be worth as much as the camera itself. But uh, only, only photographers would spend that much on a carbon fiber tripod and he had no appreciation for it. And then I finally made it to the cave. Hey, just in time. Just in time. I didn't think you were coming back. I figured like after the day you had. Looking through the camera, it's hard to tell if the background or the foreground is out of focus when I actually change between the background focus and the foreground. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna shoot both of them and use a technique called focus stacking to put them together. So the first step is focus on the background. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move the focus icon to the background, I'm gonna focus on that tower, and it's gonna give me a reading of infinite. Then I'm gonna go ahead and shoot those three brackets. After I capture the background, I'm gonna change the focus to capture the cave itself. Just like I thought, it gives me a different reading and I'm gonna shoot that as well. Now again, I'm not sure if the discrepancy in focus is enough to warrant focus stacking now, but my big fear is that when I get back into post-processing and I look at these images really large in Photoshop, I notice that the foreground is blurry if I just focus on the background. So what I've done is I've captured the focus for the background and the foreground, so later on in post-processing, I can potentially blend those two things together. I've lost the camera and I'm, I'm not mad about the money, like we have money to pay for it, maybe we even have insurance that will cover it. Sure. But, Oh, I'm pissed that that guy stole it right from under my nose. Dude, I Patrick saw, saw him, him do it. I saw him. I ran around a freaking mountain and up a mountain and down a mountain chasing him. I couldn't get it. But the thing that makes me feel good is we have it triple backed up. The entire project is triple backed up. And the only footage we lost today was just some walking shots of you on that camera. So I'm like, yeah. so we're walking back out of here now. And I know you cannot see the, the cliff down here. We have to hike all the way from this mountain down to the water, which is pitch black, I know you can't see it, and then up to the city on the other side. <laughs> I was a little worried that uh, this behind the scenes season 
it was a little boring. We're not bungee jumping and skydiving and doing the crazy stuff that we've done in previous behind the scenes. But uh, I'm sure this episode has been somewhat entertaining because there's nothing like camera theft to uh, spice things up a little bit, you know? How was it the third time? I'm ready to leave Italy. How about you? So at this point, <clears throat> I've got the manager of this hotel calling the police to do a police report. Not because I think the police can do anything, but because I think we need a police report to file the insurance claim for the stolen gear. So this is our manager at our hotel and he has been fantastic. He just helped us uh, go to the police station. He was the translator for me. He helped get the entire police report done. And I am very happy that he, accept, he accepted my offer to eat at your favorite restaurant, right? No, this is the best. This is your favorite restaurant, and I'm paying tonight. No, 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 yeah, no. yeah, 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 yeah. We're definitely paying because uh, hopefully this police report is going to allow us to make a claim with our insurance and because it was rental gear, hopefully we'll get paid back for everything. So I just remembered that my Apple Watch tracks how many calories I burn and I've been climbing mountains after drones and chasing down camera thieves all day. So let's see how many calories I have burned here. It says today I've exercised for 156 minutes, but I'm still, I'm still down on standing because I slept so late. Cheers. Cheers. To the camera. <laughs> to, the, to the poor camera. We were all excited to be back at this restaurant, and of course, the food was fantastic once again. This is good. Very good. To the lens. To the lens. <laughs> to the drone. <laughs> to the drone. Man, how many things have we lost? I am going to replace the blades on the helicopter, and I'm just going to try to take off here in this room real quick, see if the helicopter is still working. So if you take a look at this thing, I'm trying to find where the damage is. Obviously I, I snapped that uh, propeller, but other than that, there's like no scratches on it. And I think I ran into a rock wall at full speed. So let me, uh, let me swap this out and see if it still works. How incredible that is. I Dude, you ran this slam into that. a rock wall at probably 30 or 40 miles an hour and it still works. I can't believe it. Check back for next week's episode when we finally make it to Dubai. I don't know that it's really sunken in yet that I am in a shopping mall in one of the hottest countries in the world, snow skiing. And if you'd like to learn more about the full tutorial, head over to fstoppers.com slash store. Whoops.